Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. You, you, you could be nude, but you couldn't move. So you had to be a statue. Well, of course, everybody's singing. So as you're singing, breasts and, and, and bits are, are, are heaving, you know. Peace, love. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hey, Tuesday. Hi, everyone. Hey, we're all feeling very Christmassy, aren't we? Chris yeah. Hills. Your Christmas you are. tree. <laughs> I what have you yes. got on your head, Dee? I got these reindeer. This is a reindeer headband, and I just had to put it on today because I just feel so Christmassy. Good. So yes, I'm, going to, I'm doing Christmas early this year. Yeah. It's <laughs> slightly <laughs> insane, I have to say, but I you know, you've got two to trees. <laughs> what, darling? Hillary's got two trees. She has. They're very <laughs> beautiful. I, yes. do, I do love a tree. Actually, I, I've got to be honest, I haven't taken this one down since last year. I've just decorated it. I, took I haven't taken any of my lights down <laughs> since last year. I was talking to a friend of mine over the weekend who said, apparently, that it's a known fact that now anxiety is very, well, housekeeping and housework, not housekeeping, housework, is very good for curing anxiety. I bet a man said that. <laughs> oh my god i must i what? must I get a check. bottle of gin out and make my life even more interesting than this oh my <laughs> god that's just the most appalling thing i've ever yes. heard in my life <laughs> but i'm sure it was a man that said that just to make women do more housework you're not thinking of anything except making the lines in the carpet yeah, so I suppose also, you're, it's you're clearing thinking. everything out, isn't it? Or, it's like, or what else you could be doing that is much more interesting in your life? Or when, no, 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 no. When you've got a new Hoover, I am on D's side here. It is the most single exciting thing that's happened to me this year. No, you need to get out. You need to get Thank out it. and get a life and do something <laughs> with yourselves. I agree space. with Sherry. We are 50-50. Oh. We are completely split here. Sherry and I, we don't want to no do this. No way. Right? Team Hills, Team D. No it's true, way. It's true, it's true. <laughs> oh, I feel quite ill now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you agree with D, uh, please leave your comments. I would like to see what our lovely viewers have to say about this. Because all you, all you agree with me and Sherry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll true. split down the middle. It's we are. Need therapy, both of you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, they do. And it's not oh, over. And you know, you imagine? the other thing apparently it's good for, it's good for memory, In and it's actually said, quote, I, I, I was reading about this, I googled it if it was true, and a quote, for older people. So rubbish. obviously, not, I'm not talking about us, darling, because we're not older people. Absolute rubbish. How can it be good for your memory if you a car? Memory. <laughs> Listen, it hasn't altered my mental state at all. These aren't too much, are they? These are... <laughs> Oh, no, now that's interesting. <laughs> now that's interesting. Cheers, ladies. I like those. Cheers. So, Hills, we haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? So, hi, girls. Yes, it's lovely to be back. Thanks for asking me. I have been uh, checking on my mum, who's in the care home. They're doing a wonderful job. And also, really, just focused on being a good manager of my acts. So that's me, really. And decorating my trees. <laughs> I mean, it's be very Ooh. interesting having been you know an, an artist which you still are you're still presenting you're still doing stuff like this and then sort of uh, adding another you know because you have to be at home now because of your mum and you can't travel the world anymore yeah. I mean how does, how does that make you feel oh that's a really good question because I realized when I did a performance uh, last Sunday I think it was um, at Lakeside at, at Camberley at Frimley Green for Tony Hatch. She has a brand new charity called Charity Angels. And I set foot wow. on stage for the first time in two and a quarter years and did a stand up spot. And it was a feeling of euphoria. And I realized that I have been feeling invisible, which sounds a bit weird because I'm so used to performing and then stopping completely. Uh, mm. then, then COVID hit all of us, we know that. And then uh, my mum in the care home and, and just everything. And it was actually really, it's been lovely focusing on the management side, but oh my goodness, I, 
I got such a buzz out of performing again. It's it's still there. It, you yeah. Know. Oh, you how so much sure before. That's why I I thought about that because I thought you know I can't see you just as a manager because it, it's better because then you're always behind somebody else pushing. But when you're used to being there yourself, it must be really difficult. Yeah, it's it's, it's been a nice balance, and I've got, I've taken some cruises next year. I've got four cruises in at the moment that I'm just going to see how we go. And I don't want to be away. The thought of getting on a plane and leaving Britain and leaving mum in the care home. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's going to be tricky, but we'll see what happens. It's all good at the moment. And um, I don't want to work a lot, but just dip my toes now and again would be lovely. So here he is, at last, our wonderful friend, Peter Straker. Hello, my darling. Hello, Peter. Hi. <laughs> Hi, girls. Hello. Hi. How wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't believe you're really here. Having never Zoomed before. My dear friend down my corridor, I went and knocked on the door last night and I said, you can use a computer. Can you help me with this? Aww. And so here we are. Christine, thank you. Yay, Christine. Thank, thank you, Christine. <laughs> thank you, Christine. So, Peter, I want, to, I want to say I've known you for a thousand years. You are one to me. You're one of the most talented people in our industry. You've had the most incredible career and what you know, all over the place with, you know, with Bowie and with Freddie Mercury and with everything else. But I'd like to take you back to hair. Can you tell us about that experience? Were you in the first production of it? I was, and I've still got my own hair. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's real. <laughs> yes, I did. I did it. Um, we did it in 1968. <sighs> I know. I started, I started 1969. Oh, well, I was still there just then. I, I lasted I know. about um, eight, nearly 18 months. And I know. Well, it's, it's the most extraordinary thing I've ever done in my life, really, because I always wanted to be an actor. My mother was a leader singer, um, but she wanted me to become a teacher or a doctor or something. Well, none of those. I couldn't do any of those. And I decided I wanted to be an actor. And so I got into hair by accident. What because happened? Um, I, I went to see Annie Challoner, and she was uh, she was an agent um, in, in in Regent Street, very posh, which my mum knew. And I, so I went down to see her. She very kindly sat down with me and talked to me about being an actor. And you know, the most extraordinary thing about young people is the nerve we have or the nerve we don't have. And she said, mm -hmm. "Well, why don't you go to drama school?" And I said, "I don't need to go to drama school. I know I can act." Wow. And Very then, good. It's terrifying because now oh. I wouldn't dream of it. I mean, you'd think, oh. anyway, uh, I, I did that. But she had a young um, guy who just joined the office called David De Jong. And so she after we, we talked for about 40 minutes, she, she introduced me to David and she said, I think he might be able to help you. And to cut a long story short, I started going around singing um, with a band and a piano player around the country. And there was a thing called working men's clubs in those days. Mm -hmm. And I started to sing, so I got my, I used to go to Denmark Street, get my sheet music and sing songs like, tonight, tonight, <laughs> boom, boom, climb every mountain. I've climbed every mountain, I've been valley. <laughs> and and, and, um, and I, we ended up in Wales. I was doing a, a, a club in Wales and he called me in the, the night after I'd finished singing. And he said, um, there's an audition in London on Friday morning, I'd like you to come. I said, but I've got a show. He said, just come up, get on a train, come up. So I did that came up to London and did my first open, or it was an open audition for hair with people streaming. I didn't know, we, none of us knew what the show was because he just said it's some American show. And if you can do an American accent, and of course I do. So I just came and um, I can tell you, I auditioned nine times. <gasps> oh. Like most of the cast at the time as well. And um, they had the whole team from America, Gore McDermott, the two boys, Rada Ragney, who wrote it, and um, the choreographers and everything. And they were all sitting down at the Shaftesbury Theatre in the back. And of course, I'd never seen anything. And just came on and sang it. The song I sang, which is still one of my favorite songs, is um, Birth of the Blues. Oh, wow. Because I was, I was a great, I'm a great fan of Sammy Davis Jr. Yes. And yeah. I heard all of those songs. Wow. And I thought, what can I sing? So I just sang. And every, so every time I went back, um, I, I used to just um, wear the same clothes. Yeah, that's what I always used to do. Really? And I, it was a strange thing. I had a terrilene shirt on, slightly blue. I've gone all hot. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and a little scarf, which I wrapped around my neck. And, and then I, and a tweed jacket and blue trousers. And I turned up every day. And then the last time 
the, the day before the last time, the producer said, could I wear something different? <laughs> <laughs> could, I, could I wear some jeans or something? <laughs> Truly. So that's what I did. So I went out to Carnaby Street and bought a pair of striped jeans, white jeans with black and blue stripes going down it. And I came came and and um and did the last day of the audition. And I just sang the last bit of the song, which was from a whip a wheel, you know that bit. Yeah. Out on the hill. So yeah. I just did that. And they just went and they did it and they went, stop. And I stopped and, and we stopped. And then I, I this story, because I have to tell you, always remember this. You remember, you know, Paul Nicholas? Yes. He was in here, he played Claude. Yeah. So he, and he, they told everybody to stop, all of us halfway through whatever thing. And, and then he started to sing, I'll never forget it, God Save Our Gracious Queen. So he went, God Save Our Gracious Queen. And he stopped and they said, carry on. <laughs> and, and they made him sing it right to just before the end. And they went, stop. <laughs> And then they said, um, the people uh, whose names we call, um, um, just step back. And we all stepped back and we thought that was it. And then they thanked the people in the front. It was like a chorus line, really, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. And, and, it's, and, 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 and then they said, welcome to the show. You, you're in the show. Oh, it's like a reverse psychology thing. Yes. It was terrifying because we just thought, we, you know, step back. Yeah, you're going home. Bye bye. Yeah. Well, and what was it like being in a show like that in the sixties? I mean, my God, Peter, you must have the women, the the men, everybody throwing themselves at you. It, it was what well, is an experience because if you've never been to drama school, you've never been like you, you had no idea. I didn't know what um, I, being in a show. And I do remember um, thinking when I was on stage in one of the quieter songs, I looked out. And I looked out. I looked out into the auditorium. I do remember going, doing this one of the slow motion things like that, you know, singing da 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 da. And I went, so this is the West End. Oh. And I, I just remember that. Wow. <laughs> and it felt so. It was, it was a great experience. You just learn um, working with Tom Hogan, who was the director, and he was he worked with the La Mama Company in um, in 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 in, in um, New York. It, we had three months rehearsal doing the show. Because, because of the um, the Lord Chamberlain, so we couldn't play because, of course, there was nudity, there was swearing, there was all sorts of things. There was smoking on stage, and and, and the thing is, it, with nudity, of course, in the old days, you you could you could be nude, but you couldn't move. Yes. So you had to be a statue. Well, of course, everybody's singing. So as you're singing, breasts and and <laughs> and bits are, are, are heaving, you know, peace, love. <laughs> <laughs> so you heave. So anyway, and, and but it, it was the it I suppose it's the best experience because I've never done anything else before like that ever. That's extraordinary. Ever. Oh, funny. Well, we came from. Uh, I was at drama school at the time, and, and about eight of us came. And we were so shocked when the nudity bit happened because it all happens at once, doesn't it? Yes. Everybody. And we were so shocked. And everybody kind of giggled everywhere because they thought that no one knew how to react because no <laughs> one had seen this. And they didn't know where to look. <laughs> no, no one knew where to look except you did in the end. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, 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 it was, it, yes, it, it, it was, well, it hadn't been done before. And it was, no, it was, it was amazing, amazing yeah. feeling that show gave yes. and the most amazing ending. And I remember everybody standing and thinking, this is just incredible, this show. It really lifted you, didn't it? It really yes, lifted it the spirits. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a great it's show. Wonderful. Really but wonderful. talking about you and I, I remember being in the Harrogate Rep with you doing Julius Caesar with Martin Shaw. Right. <laughs> right. What? And, <laughs> what's I coming? Wasn't, I wasn't in Julius Caesar then. No. <laughs> no, no, it was Julius Caesar, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yes. And you were in it. Oh, I see what you mean. You were in it. So, but the one thing I remember <laughs> is being on stage, full audience with Martin, and you didn't come on. And I, I remember Martin standing there looking at me, going, Oh my God, where is he? And then we heard <laughs> your feet going, <laughs> <laughs> running all down the stairs. Running, 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 running. Martin's going, 
he's coming, he's gonna go, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes, it's, it's, it's happened once <laughs> more. It's, oh God. Anyway, there, there you go. Yes. It, it was the not... funniest thing ever, though. We had yes. the best. You might not remember this, but Martin um, and I, well, he was holding a lit, uh, a proper lit um, thing, like, like with fire. And as he turned, he dropped it. And it fell into the front of the auditorium and set the carpet on fire. Oh, my God. Oh, I remember that. No. I, I wasn't you aware don't remember of that. there you are, you were upstairs. <laughs> I was no, not, not aware of it at all. No. There you oh go. Oh my gosh. I, it I, I health and been, safety. Health and safety horror. would have a field day yeah. with it. Eh? <laughs> health and safety would have a field day with that uh, nowadays. They would now. Well, even, even running, because to my horror, I did that. And I have to admit it, uh, I was in Tommy, um, in the West End, um, you know, Lee Towns and Tommy at, at the Queen's Theatre. And we it, at the interval, and I was playing the narrator in it. And you've just reminded me, I was sitting in the dressing room in my dressing room with oh, Pete no. Townsend, um, um, two other people, one of the guys who looked after me, and plus um, the um, the producers. And we were having a drink in in the middle of the interval. And then all of a sudden, over <gasps> the canoy, I heard my opening song in the second half start. Oh. <laughs> Well, I fled. Them. They just kept playing and playing till I came back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> after that, I've been very careful. It's so you just get carried away. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's so easy, funny. Isn't it? Have you ever done I anything? I remember like Martin kept repeating his line to me. <laughs> and I, by the time you came on, I was hysterical. <laughs> I can't be the only. Oh, girls, I cannot, ladies, I cannot be the only person who's ever done No, no the no. thing that happened to me, which was yeah. absolutely ridiculous, and I was We've doing Sleeping, Sleeping Prince in the West End, was when we had two shows one day, halfway through the last show, I took my makeup off at the interval and went out the theatre because I thought it was over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a belter. <laughs> and, and that is when the stage doorman said to me, where are you going? And I said, home. And he said, Debbie, you haven't finished the show. And I went, oh, f Excuse my language. You can sleep oh. that. But I had to go back. I've got my wig on and the makeup on. That oh, is unbelievable. Brilliant. You, you obviously, that. you didn't want to be there anymore. Oh, I love that, <laughs> Debbie. That's fantastic. I have missed a cue. I missed a cue once. You know, you're talking about getting hot and it making me hot thinking about it. Debbie, I can't top yours. That's the best I have I've ever never, That is fantastic. <laughs> that is I was saying, I, do you remember Game Boys? Like Game Boys. Um, yeah. anyway, it was a craze a while back. And um, I was in pantomime and I was happily trying to get to the level where the rocket went off. That's all I'm telling you. It was just everything was to make this rocket go off. And I got close and close and close. This is one day I just was listening to my cue on the speaker and I was like, okay, we're okay, we're okay. And I was like, come on, come on, uh, come on, come on, uh, like this. And then I heard my my principal girl, I was playing Jack, I heard Jill say, well, I'm sure Jack will be here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like slow motion. It was like, no! Oh, not a... <laughs> and I came on just out of breath, like you did, the running. I have just seen you in Cabaret. And where you, I, my favourite singer is Jacques Brel and composer, oh. and you sang two of his songs, and you were magnificent. And it was a fabulous space in Vauxhall, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, did you really, did you it's, love it? It's Yes, it's called Above the Stab. And, oh, and we, yes. Uh, we did this show, fabulous. which was devised by my dearest friend, um, Nicola McAuliffe. Oh, and, oh and, I love and, Nicola. And so, so do she I. Was, she was doing it, and then she called me and she said, Listen, I'm doing the show, and I thought it'd be nice if we did it together. And I could, and so I said, "Well, well, that's lovely." I said, "But I said it's the day before my birthday, and I don't like to do things." But she said, "We'll just, <laughs> we'll just start celebrating your birthday from that." So we had a great time rehearsing it. It was fantastic, Aww. and um, it was, it's called "Passports to Loves and Lives," oh. and, and it, it sort of came from an idea as well that the sort of we, I was talking about because. My my parents my parents were born in Jamaica, but we came here as me and my brothers and my maternal grandmother because my parents got divorced, and and it it came about because a friend of mine, uh, I saw her this year um, um, at a memorial service, and she said these are for you, and she showed she gave me this bag, and it had passports of my mother and my grandmother <laughs> and my brothers, and apparently. Oh. She'd found them through a mutual friend was going to throw them out and put them on a skip. Oh. And she'd had them for eight or nine years. 
and it was it i have to say i was very moved i thought my god this is this is just tangible bits of the past. Oh, yes. Know? So and this so that we came up and so and Nicola devised this lovely show and she said, "What do you want to sing?" And I said, "Well, this Jacques Brel. I mean, you know, I'm a great fan of Jacques Brel's. I've always been since I was 18. I didn't even know what I was listening to, but the passion of the man. Mm. I watched his recordings and stuff. And um, those songs mean a lot to me because they're about life, and and they're yes. about life, love, loss, um, death." Um, uh, they're so they're so pertained to today. I mean, mm. it's, it's, it's universal. It's going to be like he's a sort of like um, uh, the, the French version in a different way of of um, Bob Dylan or, or something. He just mm -hmm. talked about things, exactly. that, and he was whoa. And I'm sorry, the one person, one of the few people in life I'm sorry I never met was Jacques Morel. Oh, yeah. I love his music. <laughs> I'm hoping that we're going to do a show, um, another show, because I did about six or seven years ago. Um, Mel Smith designed and directed and wrote a show about Jacques Brel for me, which we did in oh, wow. at, at the King's Head, and, and then yeah. we did at, at the Edinburgh Festival. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can do that with Nicholas' show as well. At mm, Edinburgh next year. We're talking. It, it's it's a lot of chat. Heard. That needs to oh. be seen and heard. And of course, the Edinburgh Festival show yes. they transferred to St James's Theatre I believe is that right yes 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 so, so there is life in that I was going to ask you I was going to say could that possibly be an, a thing to look forward to for us I'm hoping so it, we're, we're, we're talking about it now um, and because of course of the Covid thing nobody knows what's what to do and I noticed also in your wonderful CV which is just reads like a, a novel it's incredible yeah. is that you obviously worked with one of my favourite singers Ruby Turner oh my, she's one of my bestest friends. Um, and we, talk, we talked a lot this year, actually, strangely enough, because her brother wasn't well in America and she'd lost her father. And, and um, um, so we, we talked a lot th this year and, and she, I love her. Yes, I did. I did um, a show called um, One Love. Love. One Love. Yeah. Yes. Which um, was just a great song, a great show about um, music and people's lives and, and living in, in the West Indies and here in England. And um, and then there's another one I did with Kwame directed, uh, well wrote, and I can't remember the name of it, but I'm like that. That's okay. <laughs> I would love to see you collaborate with Ruby on something again. Well, I'd love to. We talked about it. We've talked vaguely, but not, 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 not properly. Right. I mean, she is sensational. Yes, she is. And what a voice. You thought of all the wonderful wonderful productions you've done over the years. I mean, I've seen a lot of them, actually. What's your absolute favourite, um, I mean, person you've worked with or production or, or character that you've played? I think, apart from Hare and apart from Tommy, which I just, I mean, Tommy was so immersive. And I, we did another version of it three years ago, 19, yeah, 1917, 1917, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> We're there. You see where, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, which Kerry Michael directed. Um, and um, it was with using all the, um, all the, it, we, we're using uh, um, people in wheelchairs, um, um, deaf people, partially sighted people. And it was a fantastic cast and we toured. Um, and that was one of my favorites. But I think apart from that, because I had, an, I had another chance to, to, to be in another version of Tommy. Which, oh. which was, I, I did the first one in, in 1979. <laughs> that was anyway. a great year. Don't worry 20, about that. That's not shocking. <laughs> no. 2017, and we did this wonderful version, and I got, um, and we, we talked with Peter, Pete Townsend and stuff, because we had a meeting with him, and Kerry asked Pete if, well, they asked me to play, if I would play the Acid Queen. So oh, wow. I, I got to sing, I got to sing, if your child in all he should be now. That you, you know, the, the <laughs> kind of thing. and I sung it in her key, oh, yeah. which I'm happy to say. And then and Pete Pete wrote a new song for it for me in oh, it as well, which was wow. that done. so that was fantastic. But the thing that I think I like best of all was, and I I've been saying this recently, I was the original Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Oh. Ken oh, Hill. In the, Ken, in the Ken Hill. Ken Hill, Hill. yes. Yeah. Yes. Wrote the Phantom of the Opera. And um, he said he was looking for the Phantom. And I said, I'd like to play the Phantom. Can I play the Phantom? And he said, Well, you don't want to do it. It's a lot of lurking acting, he's called. 
<laughs> so little Bugani says, this is just a lot of lurking around. You don't want to do that. Anyway, <laughs> but we did it. We did it. And it was, it was fantastic to play because I, I'm not an opera singer, but I can sort of pretend it, it, it's, it's a different genre. Yeah. But he, he used yeah. all, all his songs were um, from, um, you know, like from Donizetti and, and, and Guno and stuff. And so and when he put his own words to it, and I, I toured England ex uh, excessively with it and, and extensively with it. And we went to Japan. I went, I've been to Japan about 12 times playing the Phantom. Wow. Wow. And, wow. and I'm it, to the point of where, um, when, when I went there for the 21st anniversary, after I did it, 20, 20, uh, the first 21st anniversary, um, um, Princess Kiko, um, who came to see it when, when her daughter was just one, she brought her two daughters to see the show and said, this is my daughter. Do you remember when I was telling you about my daughter? <laughs> and, and they were there, these grown up 21 years oh, later. Oh, and oh, it, it, was, it was, that was just fantastic. And, and we've been to Korea, South Korea. And, and uh, so I, that show, that show is, and, and it was, it was good for me to do it. And I said to him, and Ken said, I said, well, I said, first of all, it'd be good for me to do it because it's a great idea that we, we, we've got a, a black actor doing it. Yeah. You know, was Ken, because, was Ken uh, Hill's version very different, Peter? It, it, it was. It was different, and the music was different. Totally. Right. The actual, um, the, the 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 play isn't that different from from the one in 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 the West End at the moment. It's it. In fact, the one in the West End mirrors Ken's. You've got a new single out, haven't you? I'm having a new single out coming out in, at, at the beginning of the year. Yes. And I'm like, we'll just give a little preview of it, a little tiny, just a taste, yeah, just please, a little please. bit. You love me. It's so fantastic to be with you. And listen, happy, happy, happy Christmas. Oh, and thank, thank you. you. And thank, you, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for joining us. You've been oh. the most fantastic guest. Yeah. Thank you. You're marvellous, mother. Silent night, holy the night. All is calm, all is bright Round yon virgin mother and child Holy infant so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly Sleep in heavenly peace. So Thank you. Thank we you. love you. We love you. Peace. I hope I see you before Christmas. Yes, we will. We will. We will. We will. Yes, we'll organize something. Love it to meet you. Thank, thank you. you. And you. Thank you. Happy Christmas. Bye, Peter. Bye, bye. We have been serenaded by fantastic people on this show. And Christopher, uh, Christopher serenaded us. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. Wow. And now, and now Peter Straker. Oh, so, um, absolute class, that man. Really is. Definitely is. Certainly well, guys, is. we will see you. We'll be back on Tuesday. Yes. Oh, yes, we will. We'll be back on Tuesday. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Oh, and thank you. We'd like to thank Hills for, for stepping in for Harriet this week. Yes, thank My you, absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.